Hello and welcome to Desert Rat Fiber Arts. I'm Desert Rat, but you can call me Lloyd. Today we're continuing our fleece study for 2023. Um, we are on the English collection. Um, and today we are going to be doing Exmoor Horn. So here that is. Um, this comes from Hearthside Fibers. I did pay for this my own, myself. I'm not sponsored in any way, shape, or form by any of these uh, companies. Uh, so, uh, but I will include a link to um, this particular collection in the description below in case you want to get it yourself. Uh, it's 12 different uh, fibers and it was like $35 US. It might be more where you're from because of shipping and whatnot but in case you're interested in in um, trying these yourself and i did the same thing for the um the international collection and i will be doing the same thing for the global collection when we get to that so those links will be in the description of these videos um anyways so exmoor horn uh english breed uh, the card here says 36 to 39 microns, staple length of 90 to 110 millimeters or 3.5 to 4.5 inches. So, let's take a look at the Field Guide to Fleece. I've got that page marked here, Exmoor Horn. There's a picture of the sheep. Beautiful sheep, beautiful animal. So, uh, okay, so origin is from England. Uh, fleece weights are four and a half to six and a half pounds or two to three kilograms. Staple length is three to five inches or eight to 13 centimeters. Uh, fiber diameter is 26 to 38 microns. So it can be a little bit finer than what she's labeling here. Natural colors are white. It says here, the ancestors of these hardy sheep have been on Exmoor in Southwest England for so long that no one knows when they arrived. Most Exmoor horns live within a small area focused on Exmoor National Park. In addition to being sturdy and economically useful animals, they fit well into conservation management plans. Okay, it is a conservation breed. Uh, it says here, crisp, crunchy, springy. This is a wool with plenty of body and an independent character. Perfect for hardy outerwear. Exmoor's blocky staples have a slightly pointed tips and a relatively large number of semi-organized crimps per inch. There may be some kemp. You can card shorter fibers, comb longer ones, or spin from the lock. It's an easy wool to spin. If the fibers feel wiry, you may want to use a worsted method to keep the yarn smooth for use in clothing. Uh, effects of dyes. This wool takes dye colors well and clearly. And best uses. The body and resilience of Exmoor yarn gives it a cushiony feel and allows it to show fabric textures nicely. Uh, stitch or weave structures will be clearly defined unless the fabric is folded or felted. Exmoor is a good choice for well-fold weather-resistant coats, jackets, hats, and other rugged items. Okay, so let's take an actual look at the fiber here. Pull my little card out and I've got these little envelopes. I stick a sample in there along with that card so I can keep track of what I'm doing here. So in this state, it's not super soft. It's kind of prickly. Um, we'll see how it spins up though. Um, so let's grab a staple links. Let me uh, grab one a little further in. All right, so let's looks to be a pretty good staple length it says here this is about five five and a half inches so five and a half inches that's a pretty good staple length for this um, I'm going to sample that aside all right so um, I've got my wheel over here I've just got to um, get the camera set up and we'll start spinning it see what we like of it
Okay, it's the next day. Uh, the yarn has been soaked and hung up to dry. And here we go. That's our finished product. We got about 24 yards, um, about eight wraps per inch, so another Aaron weight. Um, it's a little bit stretchy, not too bad. Squishy, not super soft. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe it's the prep. Uh, maybe it's this particular one. It's not as soft as, you know, the book made it sound to be. Um, uh, neighbor's motorcycle, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, I did have some issues with my wheel to get started. It just did not want to pull on. It's probably that bobbin uh, and the leader on it. But once I got it going, it was okay. It did drift apart on me once or twice. Uh, drifted apart on me during the uh, plying. Um, so it wasn't a perfect spin, but it wasn't bad. Now, I would love to try to spin this again, maybe with a different prep, and see if it, uh, if it comes out any better. I mean, it's not bad. It's just um, I didn't think it was as easy of a spin as, as, as again, the book had uh, made it out to be. So maybe if it were uh, a woolen prep, it might have spun a little better better for me. But then again, it could just been been this particular fleece that this came from. Um, I didn't hate it. I would definitely spin it again if I had more of it um, and just uh, learn from it. So uh, that's it. That's our uh, Exmoor horn. Uh, so next week we are going to be looking at Lincoln. So here we go. This is our Lincoln top. Uh, I believe this is another long wool. Yeah, it says um, staple length 100 to 150 millimeters, 4 to 6 inches. So should be a, a nice spin there. So we're looking forward to that. Okay, so until next time, this Desert Rat, happy crafting.